Hey guys, thanks for watching Beyond Science, it's Mike Chen. Today, we live in a world where I feel like a lot of people with the resources, they're just racing to build structures that would seemingly touch the farthest lining of the sky. I mean, the skyline of many cities around the world is, is just filled with towering skyscrapers, which have continued to multiply or are said to be replaced, but much taller and larger buildings as the years go by. However, this is not something new because societies of men all the way back to our ancient past also displayed their ability and desire to build the great structures, but a lot of times they went the opposite direction, establishing cities hidden beneath the Earth's crust. These underground cities were constructed and used throughout history as shelters during periods of war, as protection from the dangers posed by nature, or as sacred locations for a certain civilization's faith and religion. They have also been the subject of many ancient myths and legends, most of which suggest that these subterranean realms hold secrets that could alter our current understanding of the world and its history. Although many of these mysterious underground cities have yet to be rediscovered in modern times, but there are a few whose existence and location are known to us today, though their true history and purpose are still largely unsolved. So in today's video, we're going to talk about five ancient underground cities which until now are still shrouded in mystery. Number one, the Wieliczka Salt Mine in Poland. This table salt mine situated in the southern Polish town of Wieliczka is popularly referred to as the Underground Salt Cathedral because of its subterranean location and its massive size, occupied over 287 kilometers or 178 miles of the town's land. It was first opened in the 13th century and has continued to produce table salt until commercial mining ceased in 1996 and the entire operation completely halted in 2007, making it one of the oldest salt mines that remained operational up to the 21st century. However, some experts say that exploration and use of the salt deposits in that area dates much earlier than that, possibly around 6,000 years ago or more, as ancient cemeteries dating all the way back to the Neolithic period have been found in the region by researchers. Today, the Wieliczka Salt Mine is regarded as a national historic monument in Poland, not only because of its 700-year legacy of producing salt, but also for the complex tunnels and intricate rock salt carvings inside the facility, including various statues of mythical figures, as well as several chapels, which were either created by the salt miners or supplemented by contemporary artists. Its galleries and tunnels extend more than 300 meters or over a thousand thousand feet underground, and the mine is now a popular tourist site that admits around 1.2 million visitors every single year. Next, the village of Lalibela in Ethiopia. The holy town of Lalibela, which is located in the heart of Ethiopia, is home to the world's biggest monolithic churches. Eleven of these marvelous rock-hewn Christian churches stand in this Ethiopian village, which is why it is no surprise that this subterranean village is regarded as a sacred location by the Ethiopian Orthodox Church, welcoming around 100,000 thousand pilgrims annually. The churches are connected with each other via passageways, and the largest one of them is the House of Midhang, which is more than 30 feet tall, more than 100 feet long, and around 70 feet wide. But the most iconic of the structures in this village is arguably the Church of St. George. Shaped like a cross, the construction of this sacred site was believed by some to have been supervised by the saint himself. The Lalibela village is regarded as a mysterious underground village for several compelling reasons, and much of the people's fascination is on how the churches were built and why they were constructed in the first place. According to legends, the monolithic churches were excavated around the 13th century during the reign of Gebre Meskwa Lalibela in Ethiopia. The ruler was allegedly tasked by an angel to build the churches, and in order to immediately finish its construction, men had to work tirelessly day and night with angels to carve the structures out of solid rock. With the two creatures of God working together, legends claim that all the churches in the village were completed in just 24 years. Of course, some archaeologists and other experts find this pretty unlikely. With some arguing that some of the fortifications at the site are several centuries older than the others having built way before Lalibela's reign. Next, the underground city of Nantes in France. The humble beginnings of this subterranean settlement in northern France date all the way back to the second century, during the domination of the Roman Empire. Back then, the site was really nothing more than a limestone quarry, but for the next centuries that came, the locals in the area transformed it into an underground storage facility and a hiding place in times of war and invasion during the Middle Ages. This hidden city features a network of tunnels that extend 
around two miles. It contains more than 300 rooms that could house 3,000 inhabitants. The underground site eventually transformed into a small city in which wells, stables, chapels, and bakeries were also constructed in order to accommodate the human community secretly living beneath the Earth's surface. According to some experts, the Vikings may have also lived in the underground city when they invaded this part of France in the 9th century. It also proved to be a useful hiding spot when armies of soldiers and mercenaries pillaged and massacred innocents during the deadly Thirty Years' War in the 17th century. When Europe became more peaceful and stable, the underground city ultimately no longer served its purpose and was later abandoned and forgotten by locals. It was rediscovered by a man renovating his home in the 19th century and was utilized in some capacity during the First and Second World War. Today, its elaborate tunnel network has made it a very popular tourist attraction in France. Next, the Didinkuru in Turkey. This ancient city is concealed underneath the Didinkuru district in Turkey's Nurses province and is deemed as the largest underground complex in the city, extending around 200 feet beneath the Earth's surface and occupying an area of around 7,000 square feet. It is one of many subterranean structures found in the historical region and is believed to have been first developed by an ancient Indo-European people known as the Phrygians around the 8th and 7th century BCE. However, experts are not in total agreement on who exactly constructed the Didinkuru and when they had it built, with some suggesting that the multi-level ancient underground city may have already existed before 1200 BCE. Didinkuru has 18 levels, though only a few of them are currently accessible today since it was rediscovered in the 1960s. It was a fully functional metropolis that was capable of accommodating and sustaining as many as 20,000 residents. Not only were there dozens of inhalation shafts that distributed air all over this underground city, it also contained rooms of varying sizes that served different purposes. Researchers that excavated the site found sleeping quarters, bathrooms, kitchens, food and weapon storage in public areas like schools and churches. The city also had tombs, which seemed to suggest that people intended to sustain life below the ground through several generations. It is also believed that there is an undiscovered tunnel that connects Didinkuru to another underground city nearby, alluding to the possibility that these concealed civilizations had contact and cooperated with each other. Finally, the ancient caravan city of Petra in Jordan. For several centuries, this historical city was deemed as lost to Western civilizations until its rediscovery by a Swiss explorer back in the early parts of the 19th century. The site is referred to as Petra, the Greek word for rock, because this ancient city is carved directly into sandstone rock. Some archaeological experts believe that it was occupied by an ancient civilization more than 9,000 years ago. Various tribes over the years that passed came and went to inhabit the area, including the Nabataeans who made it a trading post in the capital of their empire between 400 BC and 106 AD. Rome took possession of the city sometime after, and earthquakes and decline of international trade in the area led to its eventual abandonment in the 7th century AD. At the height of this ancient city, Petra may have accommodated as many as 20,000 people, and it contained houses, temples, theaters, tombs, and an elaborate transport and irrigation system that allowed the locals of this area to thrive as a community. Excavations of the underground city is still in progress, and according to archaeologists, only 15% of the city has been uncovered, with the vast majority of it still concealed underground and untouched. And what's really interesting is that one of the iconic structures in Petra is the treasury, an ancient temple carved out of a 130 feet sandstone rock face. And you may have seen this in Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, in which Indy was searching for the mythical Holy Grail. Though its connection to the Christian relic is fictional, some believe that Petra may have been the actual site where Moses hit a rock using his staff, bringing forth water to the Israelites when they left Egypt. Some also think that hidden treasures can be uncovered in the treasury, and many tombs were looted by thieves in an effort to find them. You know, talking about underground cities, I, I lived in an apartment that was basically a, a basement for about three years, and it had like like sort of a, a half window above ground that I could at least tell when it's raining or not. I don't know how I feel living in a city that's completely underground for, I don't know, for, I don't know, my whole life. That's why I think just for me, if a nuclear blast ever goes off and I had the option, let's say I had the option of going into some safe bunker for uh, God knows how long, I think I'd choose the blast. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. See you later.